standing at the edge of a life I know Afraid to step forward, can't see what's below I've come so far to the top of this hill Don't want to go backward, I refuse to stand still I've got to keep going when life isn't flowing And I don't know why I want to keep growing Can't just sit here and cry Taking the leap, I'm going to learn how to fly Thought life was a lesson like being in school Where I would be safe if I played by the In the blink of an eye, the whole world can change Till nothing's familiar, no sure thing remains Faith is knowing, I've got to keep going When life isn't flowing and I don't know Good morning, and welcome to our Unity of Buffalo Sunday service. As we continue on our series based on the book, Divine Audacity, Dare to be the Light of the World. And so while temporarily our, the doors of our church building are not open for public activity, we want you to know that our hearts are open and we are connecting and expanding the ways that we connect with each other online. So yay us for doing this. Let's begin with prayer if you'll join me and uh, just take a deep moment, take a deep breath in this moment. As we come together to, to focus on the light of God within us, within each and every one of us that we know that not only is there light at the end of the tunnel, there is light in this tunnel where we stand in our life and our world circumstances. And as we are together learning about the divine audacity, having the divine audacity to express our light in this world, we come together with gratitude, joyfulness, an open mind, open heart, and a sense for the infinite possibility of good that lies within us and before us. And so it is. Amen. Well, good morning again. And let's also begin by affirming our invocation, the core foundational principle of unity together. There is only one presence and one power, living as the universe and as me, God, the good, omnipotent. And today for our daily word reading, the daily word is Unity's publication of inspirational messages. I'm really pleased that we have Mike and Annabelle Ludwig joining us today to share with us the daily word message about world peace. Mike and Annabelle, please go ahead. World peace, I contribute to peace in the world. When I learn of conflict in my community or in the world, my response may be frustration, sadness, or anger. If I have those feelings, I remember that I am more than merely human. I am living expression of God, heir to all that God is. I use my divine faculties of wisdom, understanding, and love to create the abiding peace that is my birthright. Centered in divine peace, I realize that every person is as much an expression of God as I am. As differences dissolve in a way that transcends human understanding, 
I come to know oneness with all the world's people. I let this realization shape my response to every person and every situation. In an awareness of my oneness with all people, my thoughts, words, and actions contribute to peace in the world. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. John 17.22 Thank you so much for joining us through the the, uh, online connection here to share that inspiring message, and it's really good to see both of you. I also want to take time now for us to remember our our mission, our mission statement for Unity of Buffalo, what we're all about. Unity of Buffalo practices the presence of God through prayer, education, service, creativity, and community. And the vision that we hold for the world is we see a world of love, peace, and abundance for all. And now I'd like to invite you to to join with me in expressing our core values for our ministry. And I'll step back just a little so you can see. The first core value is to be loving. And love always needs to start with accepting ourselves and having some self-love and then extending that out into the world. So give yourself a little hug to love yourself and then extend that energy out to embrace the world. And our second core value is spiritually centered. And we can remember that by just lightly tapping our heart center. And then inclusive, we extend our arms out to be welcoming and inclusive of all people. And the spiritual value, core value of being respectful. A good way to express that is simply the namaste, bow. And then the last core value is compassionate, that from our heart, we extend our hands out forward to be of service to others, to express our compassion. So I extend my hands and say, I am here to be an expression of compassion in the world. And so this is a a wonderful way to lead into our prayer time this morning, and I'm really pleased that Harriet Gromer Hicks is our prayer chaplain for today to lead us in prayers for for all those prayers, prayer requests that are on our heart and mind and for our community and our world. Harriet? It's my pleasure and honor to serve as your prayer chaplain today. We are grateful for the technology that is connecting us. Please know that all of our prayer chaplains continue to hold you in our hearts and our prayers. We hope that all of you and your families are safe and getting the support you need. Please let our office know if you need anything and we will do our best to help you. Will all of you please join in holding sacred space for our prayer time by taking a few deep breaths and focusing on our heart. We have a special prayer request for Rosemary Priori's daughter, Jennifer, for continued and complete healing. Now is the time when we all can speak aloud the names of those we hold and would like to hold in our hearts in our prayers. Father, Mother, God, we are so grateful for your presence in our lives and the lives of everyone 
you hold dear in your heart. We know that Jennifer and all of our loved ones are perfect, precious children of a loving God. We may have difficult challenges, but we know that God is greater than any condition or challenge that we may face. We see quality healing going on right now within our loved ones' bodies, minds, and souls. We know that God is with each and every one of us, guiding us, loving us, and showing us the way to our highest good. We live in an abundant world with unlimited prosperity, and we know that with God, all things are possible. Thank you, God. Amen. Please remember now, more than ever, it is important to prioritize our mental and spiritual health as best as we can. The following prayer support is available to you. You can call Silent Unity and pray live. The number is 1-816-969-2000. You can also check the unity.org website. They have wonderful resources for difficult times that you can read or just listen to. Please go to the unity.org forward slash resources forward slash tools hyphen difficult hyphen times. And of course, you can call our church office. Please leave a message, including the best time and number we can reach you and one of our prayer chaplains will get to you as soon as they can. You can find these numbers and links in the comments section below this video. Thank you and blessings to all of you for a wonderful week. We are all looking forward to the time and day when we will see each other in person. I miss and love each and every one of you. You are all very, very special. And we are here for you. Namaste. Thank you, Harriet. That was beautiful. And so as I mentioned at the beginning, today for our lesson, we are continuing on our seven week series based on the book Divine Audacity by Linda Martella Whitsett. And it's also the basis for our spirit groups curriculum. We have five different Buddha groups that are meeting and I believe there is still space in some of the groups to join and be part of a spirit group. So if, you, if you're interested in that, and I hope you will follow up afterward and send us an email through the church website and we'll get you connected with Lonnie and Millie. So the first question obviously is, what is divine audacity? That's a powerful two words there. And last week I shared a little sampling of, of what Linda, how Linda defines this. She said it is divine audacity is bold spiritual living. It's living under the radical premise that I am divine, that each one of us are. Divine audacity means I'm able to boldly express the highest spiritual principles in the midst of everyday situations. And I valiantly champion the goodness in myself and in others. So in other words, I think we could say that this is boy, just what is needed for this time and this place. I was thinking about this week, uh, a few years ago, I heard Linda uh, Martella Witsett speak at an Eastern Region Fall Conference. And she was 
sharing that she likes to think of a geode as a great analogy for our divine identity. You know, a geode, I didn't know this, but it's actually called a, the Tootsie Pop of geology. And it's one of those stones that on the outside, it just looks very plain and ordinary, just looks like a rock. Uh, but when you crack it open, you hit it with a hammer, it splits wide open and it, it reveals these beautiful crystals on the inside. A lot of people buy them and think they have really good energy and put them around their house or put them on an altar. And she said that that is such a great metaphor for her of our own divine identity, that sometimes we kind of look pretty ordinary <laughs> on the outside, but when we're cracked open, what's on the inside is spectacular. And I thought about, well, what cracks us open? Could be a joke, <laughs> it's a good time for a joke, I suppose, but also our life experiences crack us open. It can be moments of great joy, and also painful experiences, loss of a loved one, sadness, or anything that's really challenging. You know, what's happening in our world right now with this pandemic, I think we're being cracked open by this experience. And it's actually a good thing that in these times when we're cracked open, it reveals the best of humanity. And also sometimes places where we're falling short, we see things that we maybe we need to have mirrored back to us so that we can choose once again. But I see lots of examples of kindness and compassion being expressed. You know, it was me running into Annabelle at the Lexington Food Co-op on Monday morning and having her check out my groceries. It was so, felt so good in my heart to see her and to know that she's on the front lines as an essential worker right now. And I think about the story I heard recently of a, of a deaf man that's working at another uh, grocery store. And, uh, you know, it's really hard. We forget sometimes there's a lot of people in the world who are deaf. And they depend on being able to read people's lips to communicate. And at this time, when we're all wearing masks out in public, it's kind of extra hard for them. And so his coworkers at the store came up with a solution. They made a special t-shirt for him that on the back it wrote, uh, I'm deaf, tap me on the shoulder to let me know I can help you. And they gave him one of those, those white eraser boards so he could communicate and back and forth. And I thought, oh, that's, that's compassionate leadership. And so as I think about leadership, you know, when we're looking around for examples of leadership or qualities and leadership we want to see expressed, that we should always remember the place to start, first and foremost, is looking within ourselves. And that's what we're doing in this series, is looking within ourselves at our own inner divinity. You know, Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, discerned these 12 qualities, 12 spiritual faculties, and, and each one is represented by a different disciple. And to me, I think they're like facets on a crystal, you know, and each one of these, whether we call them a power or a faculty or a capacity or a light, that we all have these powers within us and together, cumulative, cumulatively, they represent our Christ light, our true spiritual essence. And the good thing to know is that they are inherent. They're innate qualities that we all have. You don't have to go outside your home to get them right now. You don't have to go shopping at a store. You don't need to go buy anything. You've already got love and wisdom and imagination and zeal and faith and understanding within you. However, we do need to cultivate them. And that's what this is about, is learning about them, studying with others, practicing, doing some things that activate these qualities. And so today we're going to start on this journey of learning about the 12 spiritual lights within us, the 12 facets of our inner crystal by studying the power, the light of faith and understanding. You know, and faith is one of those things we, I see expressed all over in many places in our world today and now and but it reminds me also of a story about a nun 
who was driving home from her job at a nursing home. And her car ran out of gas. But she remembered there was a gas station in the next block. So she walked up to the gas station, she went in, she asked the man, do you have a gas can I can borrow? I need to take some gas back to my car. And the man said, oh, I'm really sorry, sister. I just ran out of gas cans. I gave the last one to, to another customer. Oh, so she took a deep breath and thought about it and walked back to her car. And then she remembered that she had a bedpan in the trunk of her car. So she got out the bedpan, she walked up to the gas station, put some gas in it and came back. And she was standing beside her car pouring the gas from the bedpan into her gas tank. And there were two fellows that happened to be walking by and they couldn't help but notice what she was doing. And the one guy said to the other guy, he said, wow, now there's an example of faith. <laughs> She's really got faith. <laughs> so faith is, you know, we, we know it when we see it, however it shows up. And, you know, Paul wrote in the letter to Hebrews, he said, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You know, and so we have faith, and faith is what makes something that's not yet visible become real when we believe that it's possible when we have faith. And, you know, so the disciple Peter is the disciple that is linked with faith. Because Jesus said, this is the rock upon which I build my church. And he wasn't talking about a building. He was talking about a community. And he was talking about consciousness, you know, upon which we build our spiritual consciousness. Faith is the foundation. The, the, so it's perfect that it's the first one we're talking about. And Jesus' faith was fundamental to Jesus' teachings, you know, when healings when he helped someone to experience a healing. He never said, well, I healed you or your prayers healed you. He said, it is your faith that has made you well. And I think being in his presence, being in the Christ presence of the Christ presence in that Christ light helped people to connect with, to activate that power of faith that is within them. And so that's what we want to do is be in the presence of the Christ light so that our powers of faith and understanding will be activated. So those that are reading the book uh, or in a spirit group are going to go into a lot more detail on, on learning about faith. They're going to understand the nature of perception, you know, to be able to see past appearances. They're going to understand conviction as an aspect of faith, and they're going to understand expectation. You know, perception is, is being able to see what's not yet visible. I saw an article recently about some people at the University of Michigan who have invented some kind of device that is going to make ventilator, make it so that a ventilator can serve two people, two patients at the same time, not just one. That there's some adaptation to ventilators. And, and they were saying that this is a game, game changer. It's going to be able to immediately double the capacity of the ventilators that we need in this country to serve people in hospitals by this invention that they need to get out. And then conviction is just knowing, is an absolute knowing that whatever the appearances, we still know that we stand in this place where, where, where all things are possible. I remember one time I was walking to, to meet a bus, catch a bus and, and I was walking up to the, to the bus stop and, and I saw that there was a little boy, a young boy, he was standing waiting for the bus, but he was standing in the middle of the block, not near the bus stop, uh, and uh, obviously waiting for the bus too. And I said to him, hey, he said, you need to come over here and stand at the bus stop. The bus only stops, you know, at the designated stops. And he said, oh, no, no, I know it's going to stop for me. It's going to stop. And I kept telling him, no, you don't understand that bus stops at the bus stops. And, but he was determined to just wait where he was. He said, I know the bus is going to stop for me. I finally just gave up and I said, oh, it's too bad he's going to be late for school or something. And but so the bus came. Ten minutes later, I got on the bus and sat down. And, and then the bus drove up a little further. And I watched 
kind of with amazement that the bus stopped right where that young boy was standing. <laughs> and he got on the bus and you know, I heard him say to the bus driver, hi, dad, thanks for, thanks for giving me a ride. So I guess he knew who was driving the bus <laughs> and uh, he had confidence that that bus would stop and pick him up. So, so, you know, so conviction to know, to, to know who you're placing your faith in, you know, do, is God going to come through for us? Is the, the power of, of, of divine order going to work for us this time? I have absolute faith in that. And then, of course, expectation. We want to have a positive, joyful expectation. You know, Linda shares a little story in the in the book about a, a farming community that experienced a long period of a drought, and everybody was really struggling. And, and finally, one of the local ministers said, I want to gather everybody together in the town square, and we're going to pray for rain. And so everybody, people came, you know, whatever their religious background or people that didn't go to church at all, everybody wanted to lend their prayers to, oh God, we really need some rain here. And as the minister stood up to begin his prayers, he looked out and he saw the part was, the crowd was sort of parting as this little girl was coming up to the front. And uh, she was the only one out of, all the people in the community that had come to pray for prayers that had brought an umbrella. But she was coming forward carrying her umbrella. And to me, that's the power of expectant faith. <laughs> that she, she knew the rain was going to come, and so she was preparing for it. So faith is a powerful quality. You know, it helps sustain us in turbulent times. It, it allows us to walk through unwanted circumstances, shining our light. It encourages us, uh, encourages us to get out of the boat, walk on the water, as long as we keep our eyes on the prize. You know, as long as Peter was looking at Jesus, seeing the Christ's light, he could walk. But as soon as he took his eyes off that, and he looked down, he suddenly went, oh my God, what am I doing here out on this water? Boom, he fell into the water. So for us, we want to keep our eyes on the prize to remember the Christ's light within ourselves and in the world. And this power of faith has the ability to, to bring forth healings. Linda shares a powerful story in the book of healing that happened with her father. But just holding the space for faith to do its work. And then the other power I want to share a little bit about today is the power of understanding, spiritual understanding, you know, to comprehend, to understand. To, to, for me, understanding is about our ability to know that God stands under all things. That when we meet a circumstance that we don't understand or that we're fearful of, when we're in the midst of turbulent waters, it just feels that way because we can't, can't yet see the order or the good or the purpose in the situation. But once we remember that God stands under every situation, we can get recentered again. And, you know, a couple things to import, important things to know about the light of understanding. The first thing, <clears throat> Charles Fillmore said this, but it's also Jesus taught this, that the desire always precedes understanding. We have to have a desire to want to understand more. You know, when Jesus said, ask and it'll be given, seek and you'll find, knock and the door is open, it was a desire to want to, um, to, want to understand more. And then I came across something this week from Father Richard Rohr. He's a Franciscan friar in New Mexico and has become a very popular spiritual author and teacher. And I thought he said something that really is very helpful to us also in cultivating the light of understanding. He wrote that understanding of any situation begins with the primal yes, a basic acceptance. 
we look at our present situation and assent to its confines. We avoid labeling or categorizing things as good or bad, and we simply have to surrender and adapt, adapt to the reality of it. And then there's a woman, Cynthia Borgolt, uh, Episcopal priest and mystic who works with him. And she added this, she said, surrender is not the same as welcoming a situation in front of us. It doesn't mean we have to like it or say, oh, I'm glad this is happening. But rather when we think about surrender from a spiritual perspective, it has to do with yielding to what wants to emerge that we, let go of our old understandings and negative attachments to the past. And that as we release our fears, we can approach the situation with an interior acceptance that allows us to see new approaches and new insights. And that's what the light of understanding is about. And I hope we will bring that to our reimagining our future together. There's one more story I wanted to leave you with. You know, all these ideas about the 12 lights or the 12 powers uh, were originally written, first published about uh, by Charles Fillmore in the 1900s in a book called The 12 Powers of Man. And there's a story that he shares in there about Professor Einstein, who was a contemporary at the time in the early 1900s. And the story is that Professor Einstein had been working really hard and he experienced a time in his life where he felt a complete physical collapse. He just was exhausted from working so hard. And so a doctor came to treat him and the doctor said, this is your doctor's orders, don't get out of bed. You cannot stand on your feet for very long. Stay in bed, no matter what you do, stay in bed all day, all night. And so Einstein thought about it, and then he said that there, this strong, clear voice within him came to him. And the voice said, is this the will of God? I think not. The voice of God is within us. And something within me tells me that every day I must get up at least once. I must go to the piano and play. The rest of the day I'll spend in bed. But this is what I am willing to accept as the will of God. And so every day Einstein, Professor Einstein got up, <clears throat> he'd put a bathrobe on over his nightshirt, play the piano for a little bit, and then go back and spend the rest of the day in bed. And of course he had a full recovery and healing. And I really like that Charles Fillmore added that Einstein said, I only have two rules with regard to the principles of my conduct. The first rule is to have no rules. <laughs> the second rule is be independent of the opinion of others. And so to me, that, that's kind of you know, an illustration of the power of understanding, that we all have this light of understanding within us, just as Professor Einstein did. And the voice of God spoke to him about what he most needed for his healing in that moment. And he needed to get up and play the piano a little bit each day. And, and so he listened to that. And so for each of us, we want to strengthen this muscle of listening to the light of understanding and faith within us. So I have a homework assignment for you. I know, I know where you are. I know you're at home. So this should be easy for you. Here's a little homework assignment. I invite you to think about for yourself, how have you recently expressed faith or the light of understanding or where do you see it expressed in our world? And share that with someone, maybe someone you live with or you live alone on the phone or uh, write about it in your journal. And then look around your house and find maybe an object for you that represents the light of faith and put it somewhere where you can see it regularly to remind yourself 
of that faith, the flight of faith that is strong within you. And you are cultivating it, bringing it forth into even greater expression for the healing of our world. And so now we are ready for our time of meditation. So I invite you to uh, join me with taking, I like to take three deep breaths and just release any energy or concern, or anxiety, and gently close our eyes. And give thanks that we are part of this spiritual community that is coming together to practice being the light of the world, to be the light in the tunnel of the experience that we're having together now. We can gently tap our hearts if you'd like, put your hand on your heart, and to know that deep within you, you have all these facets of the crystal, the crystal that is the Christ light within you. And this week, particularly, we're focusing on the light of faith and the light of understanding. By the light of faith, I perceive the good. I trust all is well and I expect the best. And so we can ask ourselves, what could be a step for me in, in my expectant faith? How can I take a step forward to expand possibility for good by using the quality of expectant faith within me? And I also call upon the power, the light of understanding. By the light of understanding, I learn from my life. I realize the truth and I live by insight. I affirm that I am a candidate for insight and revelation. I am open and receptive to the voice of God, however it wants to get my attention. I welcome spiritual understanding that helps me to find meaning and purpose in my life and in my world. And so as we activate these qualities, these lights of faith and understanding, we know that God's grace is sufficient for all that is needed. And we know the truth of these words from Julian of Norwich, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. You can say that with me if you'd like. All shall be well, and all shall be well, 
and all manner of things shall be well. So it is. Amen. And now we have a very special song prepared by Mike Serio and Anand D to share with us. Two, one. There are miracles in life I must achieve, but first I know it starts inside of me. If I can see it, then I can be it. If I just believe it, there's nothing to it. I Believe I Can Fly by R. Kelly. Let's uh, do a blessing for these gifts that that people are that each of you will be sharing with our ministry, maybe later today or this week, and in different ways. And we have a, a very special blessing we always say at Unity of Buffalo. Together, divine love through me 
blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Freely I give and freely I receive. Thank you, God. Oh boy, that feels good just to say that. And now we'll do the blessing for, for our ministry and for all the gifts that come in that help us to serve a much wider community of people. And let's say this together. We bless these gifts and see them pressed down, shaken together, heaped up, running over and return to every giver. Thank you, God. Amen. I have a few transformational opportunities I also want to share with you. I want to just remind you that the Course in Miracles is continuing on Tuesday afternoons by video teleconference. And Annabelle is doing her yoga class on her Facebook page. Uh, if you need information about how to get connected with that, uh, please email or call our church office, and Kelly will get back to you about that. Uh, the spirit groups have all gotten started. They're off and running this week, uh, and I think you can still join a group if you want to be part of one. So again, contact our church office, and we'll get you connected with that program and Lonnie and Millie. Also. Um, these services are up on YouTube, so they can be watched at any time throughout the week. Please share them with your friends and, and hit the like button. That helps to raise our visibility. Um, we're really pleased with the number of viewers that we're seeing every week on these for these Sunday services. And then the last thing is our friendship hour. If you're watching this live on Sunday morning, please you're, just know you're invited to join us for our virtual Friendship Hour, you use the link that is in the email that Kelly has sent out. And we've been having at least 20, 20 to 22, 24 people on that. And it's been really wonderful to be able to see each other live and, and have a kind of an informal conversation and connecting time. So I think we're about ready now to, to uh, conclude the service. And I want to close with our saying the prayer of protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And so until next week, God bless you. Namaste. I know.